right? Marketing being the, the place in the company that, that has inputs and outputs, asks questions and provides answers through the gathering of data. Uh, that can be, you know, first party data. Uh, and of course it can be uh, analyst reports and other you know, quantitative data. Uh, data from your own operations is pretty useful, right? Um, you know, we took a look at, at JBC as an example. Uh, we saw that the CD recording drives, to give you an idea of how long ago this was, CD recording drives, uh, there's a huge standards war going on. And once we discovered that, our strategy became clear. Uh, we knew we had to target very specific types of customers, what we'll call power users, and we had to hit them with a message uh, that could overcome the fears that were immobilizing them. Uh, that kind of research led us to develop some new products as well so that we could create a, a complete product set and really address their needs. That was not the approach of the company when I got there. And, and so this kind of data gathering and analysis uh, done through a marketing lens and a marketing process really had a tremendous effect on uh, where we were headed as a company. And we went from the number five player uh, in the space Within a span of two years, we became the number one brand in the world. And I was really proud of that because we used some really fundamental techniques in order to do it. It was nothing groundbreaking. It wasn't the best creative in the world. It was really about <clears throat> just understanding that um, if, you, if you zero in on uh, the, the right folks and um, deliver the right message at the right time, you can be effective. Uh, and so this led to a very long journey for me about uh, you know, what is the, the, the proper role of marketing uh, within an organization and how do we do this? And I got, I got very excited when technology tools a few years later came around and I thought, terrific, we're gonna do this. Technology is gonna solve this problem. Uh, we have all kinds of measurement tools now, uh, you know, the rise of, of Google and search engine marketing. I saw this as a leapfrog technology. I thought for sure we're gonna be able to, to really get out of this trap that marketing has been in for so long with a dearth of information. Now we're gonna have an abundance of information. Um, not so much, didn't really turn out that way. Uh, and here we are you know, 25 years later and we're now still looking at, at you know, why am I wasting half my ad budget? And, and so I, I feel like we, we need to take a step back as professionals and ask ourselves, you know, are we really measuring the right things? Are we really doing this the right way? in order to be effective at the end of the day. And so as technology has matured, my view has matured and changed, uh, the recipe that I bring to companies now still involves very much doing the kinds of stuff we all do as professionals. Let's do a market forces assessment. Let's understand who our customers are, our competitors are, our substitutes. So often in technology, what I find interesting about, about helping companies with new technologies come to market is that it's a substitute that frequently is the biggest competitor. It's not a direct competitor. Frequently, there is no direct competitor. <laughs> it's gonna be a substitute. And so it's good to know the lay of the land and understand uh, you know, who are we competing against and, and in the mind of the customer, when they wake up in the morning, right? I like to joke, nobody wakes up in the morning saying, gee, I think I need new technology. Gee, I think I need to buy more technology. That just doesn't happen. What happens is people wake up in the morning saying, I have a problem maybe technology can be part of the solution. And that's the, the lens through which I like us to evaluate. Uh, I had another client, this is a fun story, I'll tell it real quick. Um, years ago, they were in uh, uh, the IBM AS400 space, it became the i-series. And no more boring computer was ever invented. Uh, it's bulletproof, it doesn't go down, and they created software that would replicate the data from one AS400 to another. So that if it did go down, you would be okay, but they don't go down. And, and so we had a real challenge on our hands. And what we did is we, we took the discussion entirely away from uh, the technology and we went hard into uh, the idea of fear. Um, you can't be down even for a second. Again, we identified our power users, casinos, banks, airlines. Uh, we partnered with IBM in the 1996 Olympics. God, this is so long ago, it's hilarious. And um, we, we made an impact socially and culturally by raising awareness amongst that target audience uh, around um, uh, C-suite issues, right? The issues about, about how this business, how these computers have, a, have a, an outsized impact on your business. Had nothing to do with the technology, had nothing to do with, with how it works. It had everything to do with uh, understanding 
what people are, our customers wake up in the morning thinking about. What we ended up doing, again, with this, with this data, as we broke, we broke the product up into different modules, we ended up pursuing um, something that really resonated with me and it, and it led to this, the second insight, one of my favorite insights in my career. The marketing funnel is a complete misnomer. Uh, I don't believe in it um, to the extent that it's used as the only model through which to view a customer relationship. In the B2B world, it's about land and expand, right? And what I see it happening so often in, in my uh, clients' uh, businesses is they talk a lot about new customers and there's very little time and attention given to the customer relationship and what we need to see uh, there. And so I think about, instead of thinking about a funnel, uh, I think about an infinite loop. And, and so um, I like to think that we can, in other words, as you hear me going through this stuff and talking about my framework, I like to think we can bring a very different point of view as marketers, not one that looks like we're sitting to the side of the rest of the organization, but we're sitting right in the middle, right within it. And we're very closely aligned with sales, obviously. We're very closely aligned with product and technology. Uh, and we're, we're deeply enmeshed in the vision and the values of the company. That, that, and of course, that comes from the CEO and the C-suite. Um, when we position ourselves properly that way, we can be of significantly greater help to the companies we serve. Uh, it does require us to do a little bit of re-education. Um, there's some resistance, but I think that there's uh, a huge, huge benefit uh, to doing that. And so before we even get to talking about how do we measure our interactions, how do we measure our campaigns, you know, what are some of the KPIs we would use. I like to make sure that we have the right framework in place uh, and that companies are pursuing things from a marketing driven perspective. And again, my background to be very clear, a lot of technology companies, a lot of startups, a lot of scale ups. Uh, I suspect and, and guessing I'm right, a lot of folks on this call don't deal with technology companies, perhaps deal with consumer products companies. I think a mature company of any sort probably has learned a lot of these lessons, I hope. Uh, but I've also worked for startups who are in uh, the B2C space, consumer packaged goods companies, and they must learn the same lessons. So I don't think this is simply a technology company issue. I think it's more of a startup and a scale up issue where you're dealing with a founder who has likely created a product uh, through their own experience, right? An innovative founder. And, uh, and they need help. And I like to think that I can be helpful to companies by coming in and, and adding to their experience, respecting what they've learned and done and helping to grow it uh, by building upon it.